Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 15. We're in the workbook Business Math Chapter 1. If you go to my YouTube channel, user slash Excel is fun. Right down here on the left is my college website link. Click on that and go all the way to the bottom. Control end. And there's the list of workbooks for this business math class. If you're in the class at Highline, just download it from our normal class site. Hey, this is the uh, final word problem example. We've done uh, one, two, three word problems. This is a big word problem. I got this from some textbook here. Uh, step one, we have to read and list all the relevant facts. Well, I've listed all these. This is a, a plan your own wedding problem. Now, we have the average. Um, our goal is to calculate average wedding costs in our 2004 wedding and many other things. We'll do that down here. Uh, the cost of an average wedding in 2001, that's from past data, it was given, so I wrote that there. Um, and here's the list of all the things for the 2004, so I just listed them all here plus the amounts. And then this, these are all the questions that they ask. This is step two and three together because there's so many. Uh, they ask you what to do and then we do it. They ask you what to do and do it. So we're kind of kind of combine those two steps. The first one is, hey, what are the total costs shown in, in the graph from 2004? Well, I've already listed them here. Total, that means we have to add. So I'm going to click here and use my keyboard shortcut. Actually, I'm going to highlight like this. So let's see. I'm going to uh, click right here and then Alt equals. Notice it, it doesn't look like it guessed right. So I'm going to redirect it with my cursor here. I'm going to click and drag up to get all the 2004 costs and then hit enter. Now the increase in the average wedding cost, because these are all average costs, um, this is the total of all the average costs. So we have it there. And we just want to see how much it went up from our 2001 number to our 2004 number. So it says the increase in the average wedding cost in 2004 over the cost in 2001. Well, increase. If we go back over here and look at our uh, list of words, increased is in the add column. Well, look at here. Here we have 20,000. Here we have 24,000. So the increase from the 20,000 to here. Well, the only way to really do this is to subtract the bigger one, or take the bigger one and subtract the, the smaller one. So let's do that. Equals 2004 minus our 2,000, and then enter. Sure enough, we have an increase of 3,811. The next uh, section, it asks if our wedding budget is 7,000 and we figured out that it costs $32 per guest, how many people can we invite? Well, there it is, 32. We have 7,000, so we'll, we will do division. 7,000 divided by 32 will give us how many? So equals 7,000 divided by 32. Hey, who's that one person that's going to come at only three-fourths capacity? Well, we have to uh, think a bit here. Even though the problem doesn't ask us to round, we have to realize that humans come in whole numbers. So we have to round to the integer equals round this number right here, comma, zero. Comma, zero. We could have done it all in one, but we did it in two steps there. So we can add, oh, wait a second. That's not going to work because we can't go up one because we won't have enough money. Hey, watch this. I'm going to scroll over here a little bit and hit F2. No way. There's a round up function. Actually, let's hit delete. Let's click on this little button right here. What if you don't know that there's a round up? I'm going to click up here. And then in this uh, search area, I'm going to type round up and hit enter. It says round We've already used that. We saw it didn't work. Ceiling, that's for pricing. Uh, uh, round, let's see, rounds a number up away from zero. Well, no, we don't want that one either because if we had the 19, we really want to round down. Hey, look at that, round down. There's an actual round down. We need it to go down because we can't include that decimal. Rounds the number off towards zero. Equals round down. And then we can simply click on this comma, zero, close parentheses. That probably was the hard way to do it because you know there's also another function. We had uh, 218, and all we need to do is hack off the decimal. Well, there's actually an integer function. I used that word earlier even though uh, they don't, didn't, they're not going to use it in this uh, textbook here. They use whole number. 
but integer equals int. Actually, let's do our little trick here. Click on this, and then type integer up here. Truncate, that's another even, odd. Those all do interesting things. Uh, we get down here, and we read it. It says rounds the number to the uh, nearest integer. Uh huh. Click OK, and I'm going to click on this number right here. Uh, you notice we also could have done the um, a quotient function equals quotient because as we saw earlier um, but we'd have to give it the numerator and the denominator right so there's the numerator there's the denominator as we mentioned earlier this gives, just gives us the integer part hey so all of those, hey what's going on there they're not dollars those are number of people we need to get rid of the format control one and then go back to general so uh, there's three ways to do it uh, whichever way you want to do it. Total cost for us. Well, OK, if we have $32 each and it's this many people, we simply multiply. Uh, notice we're multiplying, um, it could be multiplying decimals, but we don't have that here. This is 32 exact. That's a, a whole number, and this is a whole number. So we can simply multiply. If you were going to maybe have decimals up here, uh, then you, so you might want to use around, but we're, we don't here, so we're not going to. Um, you could also be super safe and just say, forget it. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, I may have some decimals there. You use your round. You're going to get the same number here if you round to the this right here times 32 comma 0. You will uh, get the, the same number. Right? Then if we actually came up here, someone uh, gave us 32.25. That meets our definition. Uh, we don't usually see, oh, look at that one. That came out pretty t t a huge decimal. Uh, in dollars and cents, we'd never see uh, a fraction of a penny. The one place you might see a fraction of the penny, though, is in uh, stock market quotes or uh, uh, bank quotes or things like that. Amount left over, well, this is how much we're going to spend. This is how much we had budgeted. So we simply uh, do a subtraction equals 7,000 minus this right here. Now let's scroll down here. Now our next problem says we have this many people that we want to come to our wedding. We have budgeted 7,000, and we want to figure out how much per guest, amount that can be spent on each guest. It could be also stated as per guest. Well, that means division. We have 7,000. We need to chop it up into 150 pieces uh, and figure out how much for each person. So we'll simply divide equals this divided by the 150. We can see there's uh, some decimals here. If it tells us to round to the nearest cent, uh, we can go ahead and we know how to do that. Equals round. And I'm going to click on this and round to the penny, which is 2. So we can spend $46.67. Next, the next part of this problem says we have a budgeted amount uh, for our wedding of 4000 Cost per guest is going to be 27 We want to figure out the number of guests uh, we can invite. If we have this much money total, and this is how much it costs per guest, then we can simply divide equals this divided by this. <coughs> Since we cannot invite part of a guess, of course, we have to, and let's use our int function here, integer, and it'll just hack off those decimals. As soon as we're dealing with people, we can use that integer function, 148. Total cost to us, well, if it's 27 bucks per person, 148, we can simply multiply. And we're multiplying whole numbers here. This is exactly $27. This is exactly 148 So we uh, don't need to use a round. And it didn't tell us to round to the, the cent. Amount left over, well, we have this amount. We use this amount, so we can simply do subtraction. Now, uh, in this problem, it asked us the same exact question, but with some different numbers. So here, it gave us. Budget amount for the wedding, cost per guest 15 bucks, and these, these questions were in exact same order. So guess what? Since all these formulas we just built here, this is like a little template. We can copy and paste it right down here. 
If you don't believe it, you could click in one of these right here and hit F2 and C. Click here and hit F2 and C. And sure enough, uh, 990. Finally, there was one last part to this. It's a number of bridal bouquets. And cost per bridal party bouquet, $36.25. Number of uh, boutonnieres, five. And cost per was seven fifty. Total amount budgeted for the flowers. Well, we could do this in steps, but we could also, if we know our order of operations, we could um, calculate the amount spent for both the bouquets and boutonnieres all in one. And I'm going to use the round function because we definitely have some decimals we're multiplying here. Really, what we need to do is go five times thirty-six plus five times seven fifty. So you ready? equals round, and I'm going to do in parentheses, f uh, not in parentheses, uh, 5 times 36.25 plus 5 times 750. Now, why in the world can we do that? Because this multiplication and this multiplication will be done first, order of operations, and then it will add, comma, because since we're rounding to the penny, 2. Control Enter. Now I just want to hit F2 here and show you that whole formula right there. We multiply these two plus and then multiply those two and round it to the penny. Um, finally, amount we have left over. That's a simple, uh, the, this big amount for all the flowers minus what we spent for these flowers. So equals this minus this. And uh, there we have it. That's that um, a big uh, word problem uh, all in uh, one together. All right, uh, that's it for chapter uh, one. If you click over here, there's some uh, more uh, problems with some answers in here, uh, like from a chapter test or something like that with a bunch of uh, questions and some answers there. All right, we'll see you next chapter two.